Welcome, welcome to Abracadabra. Create what you speak. Hello, everyone. What a day. Okay, look at this. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Abracadabra. Create what you speak. I'm Ilan Azulai spiritual mentor and a sound therapist for you who are ready to reclaim your power, to recognize your gifts, to map your experiences. I want to talk a little bit about mapping our experiences and to bring your gifts to the world. We're here to, uh, to bring our gifts to the world, to be an example before others, first of all, to ourselves. So, Hello, there's a, I want to share with you a lot. There's a lot going on. And uh, today there is also at three o'clock at, uh, on spiritual yada. Um, we have a, a wonderful program and I'll fill you in on that. Hareini mekabela l'atzmi et mitzvah tase shel ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha hereby accept on myself the due commandment or the utterance of love your neighbor, your friend, your partner, your gardener in the same way that you express love to yourself. And I want to uh, I want to touch about that a little bit about this utterance, this prayer, this intention. I'll wait until a couple more are coming in. And uh, if you have any anything you want to share, any questions, anything you want to write, you can just write it down on the on the notes, and I'll hopefully I'll see it. <laughs> it's a new uh, it's a new way I'm doing this broadcast, and so once a month I will uh, once a month I will come up here and share with you thoughts, experiences, realizations. Uh, ways to map our experience. So every experience that uh, that I go through, everything that we, every experience that we go through, is another opportunity to add to our arsenal, if you will. All right. But I don't know. I don't know about the word arsenal. It feels uh, arsenal feels like if you're going to war, and we don't have to go to war to, we don't have to suffer to uh, understand. We don't have to suffer to come to a realization. We don't have to suffer. To exist, there is this old sentence. I know my the the, the generation of my uh, my parents uh, believe that oh, if you suffer, you exist. And um, it's not not necessarily true. <laughs> um, today, I want to talk about three things: about sound, our vibration, the main focuses main points sound or vibration leadership and choice and i've uh, touched about it on the friday on friday talk about leadership and choice first i want to uh, go over the uh, the first utterance the promise the intention so everything comes from an intention it starts with the with the, it starts with the thought we have a perception then we start believing things and so where does our intention come? And that ties into our third point of choice. But um, in, in the sentence of what, what, uh, what I understood the first thing is that first uh, point is ourselves. How do we look at ourselves? As you express love to yourself. So the source starts first starts with yourself, starts coming from our place of inhabiting. What place we're inhabiting within ourselves when we talk to one another, when we talk to ourselves. There is a uh, there is a um, he who fears he shall suffer, or he suffers. What <laughs> exactly? <laughs> Thank you, Julie. It's just it, it, you know brings so many points. The suffering itself, or the point, or the uh, the point that we're trying to overcome. Many times, many times we we have a fear of overcoming something. Like sometimes when I come on the radio, when I come on the webcast here, it is uh, I have these butterflies and this like uh, 
no, maybe I should do a should do a, uh, a rerun or something or see what guests I have uh, coming in. But it's these butterflies that uh, that make it everything worthwhile. And so many times it's the the thought of what we want to do that is more debilitating than that which we want to do to begin with. And so pay attention to yourself, pay attention, pay attention to something that you really wanted to do, like you wanted to go out, you wanted to show your gift, your painting, and you're going out and you want to show your first drawing, right? Or you want to show your art, you want to show something that you're doing. I remember my first time, it was, it was horrifying. It was... Uh... <laughs> and so many times it is that thought that is creating a greater fear because there is an expectation if you take it to the other side when we expect something good when we are uh, let's say when uh, if you if you go to, you take a test or you are expecting a phone call or you're expecting some meeting to go in a certain way so we're all excited we're all excited and we tell ourselves oh don't get too excited you know just in case you know be realistic right we kind of puncture our bubble so what happens sometimes we get disappointed because we expect so we expect we get our hopes to a, to a level of uh, bubbling, and then uh, somebody turns the fire off. So it's the same way on the other end. When we are fearing, when I fear on going somewhere, when I fear of trying something, so I will have this, well, in the past, I would have more of that, uh, where I, I can recognize, I can see it as a movie. And do an exercise when you are in this place. Because the thoughts are not us. The thoughts are our thoughts, but they're not us. So uh, so th this place of fearing what may come, fearing what may happen, is greater many times than, than the issue itself. So first, looking at ourselves. How do we talk to ourselves? So there is this uh, professor, uh, Japanese professor, Masuro Emoto, and he did a famous uh, water experience. He wanted to prove that uh, that uh, water is water has memory. And so he took two uh, um, groups of water and then uh, froze them and then the particles. And then what he did, he uh, put the, the two groups of water with two groups of people. The first group of people... Um, talked nice words, words of encouragement, words of encouragement to the water, to, the, to this uh, uh, amount of water. And then the next group in the other room just talked negative. So the first group would say, how great you are, I love you, uh, you're great. Just like if you're talking to a person and you're encouraging the person. And the second group really talked negatively. You're nothing, it's just, just demeaning and... And all this kind of stuff. And the interesting happened. The interesting happened. Uh, thing that happened is that the first group responded by shaping its particles to a beautifully, uh, ge beautiful geometrical shapes. Just, um, I will put uh, a, the link at the afterwards. The link to that, to that uh, research, so you can take a look. And the other group uh, turned into just a brown splat, like. Dark matter, like dark matter, really wasn't anything pleasant to look at. So think about that. So he was claiming basically that water has memory. But think about that. If we're more than ninety percent water, and we talk to ourselves the way that we talk to ourselves many times, especially when we are anxious about something, or we have some kind of an argument with a with a partner, or something at work didn't work right, or this pressure of the corona of the coronic era. As I call it, uh, has uh, has an effect. Has an effect. We work with, with with food, with whatever that is. So how do we talk with ourselves to ourselves? So the after the hakamocha is a very core uh, intention to first of all focus on the place that we inhabit, and that goes to everything, not just how we talk to ourselves, but what choices we make, what choices we make uh, when we inhabit a certain place. So, for example, uh, if I if I got a ticket this this morning, or something that happened that has the potential to shift me out of my center, then any choice, consequently, any choice after that, 
is made from the from the place of how I feel. So think of a of, of a tree branch of a tree trunk, looking at a tree, and we want to go up. That's our intention to get to the top of the tree. And so I'm going up the tree, and then I find this little branch. And this branch is really nice. Oh, so I'm going to rest on this branch. And then I found a little nest of something on the branch. And I find myself being on the branch all the time, but not oops, but not on the trunk. So we may be in a place where we are distracted, where it's, we're taken out of our center. And how do you know that you take off your center? You're taken out of your center? Is anything that makes you feel not good? Anything that puts you in any kind of doubt? Any kind of doubt, any kind of questioning of yourself. Now, there are things, it is good to check ourselves. Good to check ourselves to see, am, am I on the right path? Am I going towards my vision? Is, is my vision in, in, in front of me? So what I'm making, the choices that I'm making are coming from a, from a good place. So what choices do I make when I inhabit this place? And so I can go on a branch and I could be distracted. And then somebody tells me something and that ticks me, that ticks me off. And then somebody tells me something else. And that can tick me off. And then suddenly I created a whole new world that exists only in my head. But it's still on a branch. So I'm far away from, from the, the trunk. So the, quest, the, the thing to do is, in this case, many times to ask ourselves, to stop and ask ourselves, what is our goal? What is our goal? Where am I heading to? Is this where I intended to go? I know that when I, uh, I'll, I'll share something with you, and, and I, want to I want to remind, and I, I want to remind myself to remind you, so I'm reminding myself to remind you. And um, this today we are going to have at uh, 3 p.m. on Spiritually Ad on the on the webcast webcast slash podcast I'm having with uh, with wonderful Penelope Jean Hayes. We're going to have a wonderful guest. We're going to have Sherry Edward. Sherry Edward is a pioneer of bio of biology bioacoustics, of human bioacoustics. And what is human bioacoustics? This is a, this is science that is combining esoteric perception with science. It is the understanding that sound, frequencies, are, is the ultimate healing for the body and soul. We'll be looking at, at her story, and she has a very unique story of um, how she heals with sound, with her voice. She was gifted. She uh, When she was young, she was gifted. And um, she heals people with her voice and uh, by voice profiling. And I've taken this course and I'm starting to do this now, so soon I will reach out to some of you to receive some voice profiling to, uh, to analyze. And the voice, as she said, as it is, is really an, a holographic representation of all that we are. Through our voice, we can uh, discover any ailments, any potential ailments, any imbalances emotionally, spiritually, physically, any anything that is out of whack. So also if I, also if you've gone through trauma, trauma affects the frequencies and reduce certain frequencies. So that is represented in the voice. Now, granted, we are not many times conscious of everything that is happening. We have in our we have in our brain what is called a default mode network. Default mode net network is like a router, and the router is routing the information between our subconscious to our conscious. And so, when we uh, um, most of the time it's active, but it's not active when we do meditation, when we work with uh, sound, when we dream. So this is something that uh, we'll talk more in detail. As far as, uh, as far, I want to go back to, so today at 3 p.m. on Spiritual Yada, it will be also broadcasted on my uh, wall and on YouTube channel and on the Spiritual Yada page. That's facebook.com slash spiritual yada. And where, we're, where Penelope and I yada yada about everything uh, in life through a spiritual lens. So back, I wanted to share with you a story that uh, when I uh, when I came here to the States in about, I think it was 93, yes, 93, 94, 
Um, I came with an intention. I came with an intention to continue my my music studies and uh, to go back to Israel and and to continue my music career, which started in Israel. And what happened here when I got here? I got here from for a different reason. Uh, I got here um, uh, back in '93, and I was distracted. I was distracted uh, because of I was in a new country. I came from a place where. Um, living was difficult, especially as a as a musician. Where where isn't it? And um, and I was distracted. So I started going up on a on a tree trunk, and I was distracted for for uh, doing things in in uh, in this country for marriage for a lot of things that now marriage is not necessarily distracting point. It is it is us right. It is where we choose. So. Um, so that's distracted and so i didn't i wasn't aware at that time i wasn't aware at that time i was at that time 23 24 and i wasn't aware i was just in the moment and but in the moment many times when we're saying flow go with the flow be in the moment it can be very confusing that we don't know it when it conf when it's confusing we don't even know it we know it many times after the confusion confused itself and so, so uh, I didn't stop asking, where am I going? And, uh, and for many years, it's been like a tin can from one wave to the other. And uh, this is the example of going up on a tree trunk. And I like that branch. And I'm staying on that branch because that's, um, that's, uh, that's appealing. For example, I got to computers through music. I started. I, I learned music in Israel, and as I was coming to the States, I got fascinated with with Apple, and uh, and I found myself in the computer world, systems management, and all these kind of things. Eventually, for the most years, and I realized that the computers that I was, the computer work that I was doing later on in the last decade, I should say, or the last decade and a half, I realized that the work I was doing on the computer started initially to support my music. And then it morphed into what it was for the computers. And so I, I, I deviated from, from, from my, my trunk. And yet, everything serves for the good. Because now I'm in a place where I work with people, I guide people, I, I'm able to I understand what I'm doing on uh, technology, and I, I can get all that, all that we've done, all that I've done served me to be in this place. And this is the same thing for you. Everything that happened in life, we can look at it as a mistake, or we can look at it as an opportunity to learn from it. And when people say, oh, never met, doesn't matter what happened then, let's, look, let's focus on where we are now, I believe this is really a mistake. It is not about going to the past and dwelling on the past. It is not about going to the past and living in the past. It is not about going to the past and saying, oh, why did that not work? And I, I, I have to be sad and beat myself up for what didn't happen back then. No, it is to look at where we were so we can learn. Now, most likely, when, what, when, when something like this happens and we realize something, we're saying, oh, we're never going to do that again. Well, of course, the, that particular thing you'll never go to do again. It's like a, a lightning doesn't hit twice at the same place. right? So granted, but it's not about learning why, uh, like that you did this and now you don't want to do that. It is the question of why did we do what we did? And at, in the reality, the, the, uh, at the end of the story, um, of whatever story we are telling ourselves, at the end of the story, when we have a result, we say, oh, well, the why really didn't matter. It didn't matter because the result is here. However, it does matter if we want to learn. I mean, we're going to, when we, when we go to study, we study history. We study what happened in history. We try to learn from history. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. But we try to learn from history. We look at we look at situations. And we say, "Oh, they did this. This is why the empires failed. This is why all these kinds are failing. All these things are failing." So it is important to go back and to look at why at why we chose what we chose, not why we chose that particular matter, but what place we inhabited within ourselves when we made a choice, and then 
we can understand how we practice the Ve'ahavta So the first, so that all ties into the same sentence, but to the same utterance, but it also touches on the topics of leadership, of choice, sound. Sound is, is a building block. Our body, our soul, our body has all that it needs to heal itself, everything. And things will start coming up in the next few weeks, and we'll see because we are going through a significant, a, a massive significant change in global perception, in personal percep perception. And, um, and so, so we are here to implement that. First, to understand that and and implement that. So all these, so sound is a uh, is is a building block. Everything is in sound. Everything is in our voice. This is also what is differentiating us between the animal kingdom. We are above the animal kingdom by one thing, by speech, by the power of our words, because the power of our words have the intentions tied into them, and when we speak our our frequency when we speak our voice it is important also to hear it back why why is this abracadabra why is this program called abracadabra you know what this came to me in in, in a I, I don't it just came to me and it was so clear to me that this is what it is because abracadabra if you didn't know in aramaic means literally i create as i speak so what do we create what place within ourselves do we inhabit to create that which we want to create now does it mean that we get every time what we want? Probably not. And so, so the question is, well, so what's the point? Well, what's the point is that many times what we want is not good for us. And many times what we want is not in our energy field. And so if we are not creating something, it's possible that we are not in that frequency. In that frequency to create something, to augment something, to change something. And um, and so so when we are in the right frequency, we start seeing things happening. So when I create, when I uh, started with this program about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago, it was about creating, about creating and creating a, 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 a an environment, creating a breeding ground for what I want to manifest, be manifested. For I'll give you another example. When I started, I have a tea line called High Tea, and uh, you will hear about it a little bit more uh, in the coming weeks. And um, when I was in Boston, and I, I was in one of my darkest times, and I was I, I I knew what I wanted. I came up with a with a with a formula of creating the tea from the plants and herbs and. Uh, and it's a heart opening, but we'll talk about the tea another time. Um, I wanted to create that tea and to seal the bag and everything. And one guy on the on the left or right told me, "Oh, come on, Elon, don't do that. What, what, what are you going to do? That? Who's going to buy from you? What's going to buy from you? You're going to make a bag, so you're a little guy in in, in Boston and when you create the tea." And then the other self told me, "What are you talking about? Just create." Just do something that will give the universe, will give God the opportunity to give you. It's like the joke of somebody who wants to win the lottery, prays to God for 30 years, and God says to the angel, yes, but he has to buy a ticket first. So we have to create that environment, right? And so wanting and not wanting, I went with these two entities with me and put the bag, put the right, um, uh, the right um, dosage or the the right amount of the, 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 the formula that I created for the tea, put it together. And as I sealed, as I put the sticker on the back of the bag, within a minute, I received a text from uh, a, a woman in California whom I did ceremonies for that asked for 20 bags of that tea that she loved so much uh, during Christmas. That was a few years ago. So that automatically confirmed on a small scale, because it was just starting to come out, on a small scale confirmed that when I'm in there, when I try, when we try, when we, no, not try, when we do, because try is really the negative, but when we do something, also if you don't want to do something, to do it, to give the opportunity, 
for creation, to give ourselves the, the, the breeding ground so we can create, so we can make, so we can enjoy our creation. And so when we choose, it is really important what place within ourselves we inhabit, and it's the frequency. And so listening to sound, listening, and, and I will share more tools uh, later on in the show today at 3 p.m. on Spiritual Yada with Cherry Edward, uh, the bioacoustic pioneer of bioacoustics, uh, a human bioacoustics. And it's really combining our body, our spirit, our sound to heal our body. So I will share more tools there. So what place do we inhabit? Now, the next part of Ve'aftalerecha Kamocha is after you realize where we are, after we realize where we are, it is love, it says in Hebrew, love on Aramaic, in Hebrew, sorry, love to your neighbor, not love your neighbor, love to your neighbor, meaning I want to provide, I want to give, I want to wish the same, the, the, the great things that I want for me and all the goodness for that person. I may not know the person, and that's okay. We don't know everybody. And also when we know, we don't. So, but nevertheless, the intention of having the goodness for somebody else, and it is hard when we are in a in a place that is a little down, that uh, we had a, a rough week. It's, it's a constant effort to go out of our place when somebody tells us something good about themselves, to be happy for them, to be happy that it's, for them, not why is it for them and not me? Why is it for them and why do this? Why does this person have this and I don't have this? Well, because each one of us comes with a box of crayons, different box of crayons to this world. Each one of us comes with a different, uh, with a different canvas. For many years, I compared myself to others, and and because I compared myself to others, I would never come to anything authentic of my own because I would compare myself to others, and that happens. A lot, and that, and that's almost, I would say, natural to our human condition. This, this is happening. So, our choices, our choices come from the place that we inhabit. When somebody is talking about free choice, do we have a free choice? Do we not have a free choice? Here is how I look at it: when we make a choice, when we make, when we take a left turn on the road, this road is going to lead us somewhere. Right, this road is going to do this. It could be a blocked road. Uh, it could be um, um, a road that turns around. It could be a cul-de-sac, whatever that is. When we make a right turn, we can go right that, but that road is predetermined. It has a purpose. It has an intent. Now, within that road, you could have other turns. But to get to these other turns, you need to take that particular road. So whatever choice we're making, that is where we make the choice. When we decide where to turn, when we decide where to turn and and where to go, that is where our choice is made. And the choices are made based on where we are within ourselves, what place within ourselves we inhabit. So if I am adventurous, I'm going, if I feel good and I feel good about myself, I feel good about what is happening. You know what? I'm driving today. I want to be adventurous. I want to just... Right? So I'm going to a place where it's not written on the map. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know where it's going to lead me. But I'm going to take this road. I'm going to take this road. So the choice is done on the level of before we enter a decision, before we enter a place, before we are making something out of what we of where we are. And it affects and what is affecting is where we are. And the sound and the voice is reflecting. It's a hologram. It's a holographic representation. And so uh, yes, there we go. So um, now, in the same in the same token, we all have drawers. We all have closets. We all have drawers, and we put all our uh, we put all our places that we don't want to go to. Maybe times our shadows or places that we don't want to go to. We put them in these drawers. We put them in these closets. And um, and many times when we want to be comforted you know we, we if we are if it's a shadow usually we don't want to bring it up we don't want to bring it up we don't want to talk about it with somebody else we keep it in in the closet right when then, so what happens when we go there what happens when we go to these closets many times we go to these closets either to judge ourselves 
or to be comforted. So we either judge ourselves or we be comforted. And so when we judge ourselves, we go there and we say, oh, this place, I'm fighting this thing. I really don't, I really don't want to be there. But, and then many times when we have this experience come up, uh, I was talking to, uh, to a client where she was talking about issues with her parents. That every time that she sees her parents and they start talking, she has a, she doesn't want to talk with them. And so, so there are some some issues there, are some traumas, right? And then, so when when she doesn't want to talk to them, she goes into this place of pushing away this shadow. And then sometimes we go to these places to comfort ourselves, to comfort ourselves, because what is happening when we enter, when I enter this room of this pain, I'm being comforted by the pain, by the pain based on the environment that the pain is living in. So this pain contains all the ingredients that support that pain to exist within the same room it's confined it's a it's a closed area it's a military zone area right it's a closed area so when we go in there we are in that zone we are in that place or we are remembering something that uh, today causes us pain because of where we were you know i i can say about myself that sometimes i would go to a place where i remember things and it's comforting and it's comforting because now to, today now i know where i was and so as far as the first point judging ourselves judging ourselves we judge ourselves because when we go to that shadow to that place we judge ourselves with our with our eyes of today when that happened, when that event happened, when the trauma happened, when that place of pain happened, we were in a completely different state. I was in a completely different uh, way of looking at things. And today, we are with knowledge, with experience, with a place of understanding, compassion. Right? So if we are in a place of compassion, how are we treating ourselves, our young selves? How are we treating our little kid, our inner child. And what does the inner child inhabit for the most part is wonder. And but that child was shun away. So it is not about creating these two worlds. This world is here and this world is here. It's really about integrating. This is this year's in, in shamanism. It's integration, actually in the entire world. It's integration. It's integrating all these parts within us. All these parts within us that we believed caused us A, B, C, and D. But actually, many times, we continue to inhabit these fears without remembering why we're doing them. We're keeping, we're keeping inhabiting and, and doing these, these, uh, these actions of, oh, I don't want that, without even knowing why we're doing that. For example, somebody has a, a fear of water. And for years, they're 30, they're 40, and for years, they're afraid to get into the water, into the ocean. And so many times you say, no, this is who I am. Well, this is, could be something that you bring with you, something that is karmic, something that trauma that happened in a very young age that you don't remember. And so we end up doing things, practicing our, practicing our, our pain, practicing our fears, identifying with them, saying, this is who I am. And that goes with everything. That goes with everything that we identify. This is who I am. No, I don't like audiences. This is who I am. That's okay. Some people don't like that. It doesn't mean that you are that anybody is broken, <laughs> right? It just means that you like, and that's okay. And and if we are here to push our boundaries, to go to the unknown, to trust that we are all capable of improvising, of all capable of being in places of creation. Creating is creating something from nothing, not inventing something from something. Is creating, and and so we are incapable of. We are capable of creating. We are capable of of uh, of singing, of making music, of acting, of painting. We just do that. And so it's integrating all these places. And the integration can happen when we look at ourselves five years ago with the understanding of where I was five years ago. Taking the responsibility of, of, of that, of my part in, in, in this 
in that particular instant or whatever instances there are, taking the responsibility, seeing if there were any people that were affected or pain. Well, most likely there are people that are affected almost every time. And we are people too. But let's talk about, I'm talking about others, people that are affected by our action. Now, one could say, well, you know, but if it's all for the good and we're all playing uh, in the journeys of one another, creating circles, co-creating, nevertheless, we're humans. We're going through emotional shifts and emotional changes, and we're interacting with humans, and there is the lay of the land. How are we conducting ourselves? How are we being in the lay of the land when there are other people? So five years ago, I may have done something. Well, you know, I've done a few things. Um, Ten years ago, that that need um, recognition. Now, the other person may not have, they may not want that, and that's okay. The important thing is, how are you coming to terms with what happened? How are you, what places within yourself are you inhabiting to come to terms with what happened? And so then the integration can happen. Then when we are in a place of harmony, when we are in a place of acceptance, of kindness, when somebody tells you, be gentle with yourself, what does that mean? That's exactly one of, one of, the, way to, one of the ways to look at it, is how do you look at yourselves based on yesterday, based on the day before, or the year before, or five years before. And so the choices are made, again, from the places that we inhabit. Right? And then so, um, and then the leadership, right? Leadership. So how is a, a, a leadership um, being defined here? And I'm not talking only about leadership to the world, although we definitely need those kind of leaders with 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 high morals in this world. I believe that everything needs to be ripped out from the root, from the source of it. And we talk about it a little bit about in, in the sound program, uh, Spiritual Yada, 3 p.m. today, Pacific time. Um, what places do we inhabit? We have leaders today that are not operating from and there are three challenges for leaders, right? And um, and this is something that that reflects also on us when we are in connection with other person. Our ability to listen to somebody else, our ability to shift ourselves depends depends on the lay of the land, right? And if something is changing, like the coronic era, this changed our entire our entire life uh, as we know it. Right? We're into something else. And the third one is the ability and uh, the capacity to admit when we're wrong. So three things, the, the leadership challenges. Can we listen to somebody else? Our ability to listen, our ability to shift and to change based, to be dynamic based on what is happening around. It doesn't mean to lose yourself. It just means to adjust the way that we do things in order to achieve what we want. So maybe now we have to do something different. If there was one tool to do a job or to, or to get myself, uh, like acting, for example, or or any any other any other um, uh, field for that matter. In this time, in this coronic era, is very difficult because we are made out of uh, in our DNA is to be connected, is to be belong, belonged is to be loved, is to be seen. And so when we don't have this connection, this physical connection, first of all, we understand how important that is. But how do we reinvent ourselves to create an environment where we're still accessible, where we still can, can be of service, when we still can connect with other people? How do we build and create relationships in this kind of times? So the ability to shift, not just to the world, but to somebody else and to myself, and and uh, can I admit mistakes? So the worst thing that can happen is to reject those things, to reject, the, to uh, deny listening, not wanting to listen. The rejection of shifting, the rejection of, sh of changing, of changing the way that I conduct myself to myself, to a partner, uh, to, to, to a work colleague, to anybody. And... Uh, I think the, the the thing that seals everything with a with a stamp of uh, of rejection is the uh, the rejection of admitting that we were wrong, 
and I know I've been to all these places. I've been to all these to all these movies. The actor dies at the end. Been to all of them, and and uh, I went through a lot of uh, a long period of uh, rebuilding, and um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But I tell you what, it is like something that we want to do and we are afraid of doing. And right, the, the, like I talked in the beginning, the fear of doing something is many times greater than that which we want to do. But after we do something that we are challenged, the reward is the internal reward of satisfaction and, and growing and understanding the reason why I did something, the reason where I was why I did something is so great because this is going back to the place of choice. Yes, this is going back to the place of choice before I make the choice. So it's also choosing partners. What place within me I inhabit when I choose a partner? What is the important thing? What am I looking to for in when I'm choosing a partner or when I'm doing a, a project or when I want to be in a certain place? You know, so that go that that understanding, that studying of our actions. It's not about dwelling in the past, but it is mapping our experiences. And this is this is what I do uh, when I when I guide people, when I work on spiritual concepts with people, and, and working through sound is really mapping our experiences, taking everything that we go through, everything that we went through, practicing recognizing the places that we inhabit, recognizing the energy, recognizing the frequency that we are inhabiting at that particular moment that gives us this ground to create what we're creating. And so eventually, as we do that, as you do that, it's it, 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 it starts catching up with time until you do it almost real time. Until something happens, somebody tells you something that usually would trigger you. But then you stop and you start smiling because you recognize that place. You recognize that place of where that person is coming from. And so you drive in the road, you drive, and, and uh, if you have uh, road rage, you would be upset with anybody who cuts you, anybody who is just swirling the road and going and crazy. Well, they don't know you, right? They, they, they never met you. So what does that mean? Does that mean? That means that they're doing that because this is who they are. And this is how they respond when they are in whatever situation they are in that particular moment when they're driving their car. And so when they are in a rush, they don't, they don't care. They're just going. They, they're saying, well, you know, I, I, I have to go. I have to run. I don't care who is here. Or if they're upset with their partner or whatever that is, that's how they act. So it is not, uh, uh, it is not about you. It is about them many times, 99% of the time. Let's put it the other way. There is, when somebody tells you something, or when somebody lashes at you, or somebody uh, confronts you, there is all, always at least 1% of that truth in you because we are mirrors, we are reflections. So now, does uh, did that person recognize their own, uh, whatever they are saying, whatever they are putting on you, did they recognize it within themselves? Yes, they probably are not aware of it. But it also means they recognize it because it exists in your space. So there is at least 1% of whatever somebody is telling you true within you. It could be 1%, it could be 20%, it could be 50%, it could be 80%. Nevertheless, that exists only also within them. So the leadership, what places uh, can I be able to, am I able to listen to other people? And this is, this is a key. This is, this is a key for opening and, and listening. We're talking about our ears, right? What we bring inside we also take outside. So it's important to, to notice to when we speak. What's, what's the frequency? And you can feel that. You can feel that. And um, I work with you on how to feel that. You can feel that vibration when your voice is right at the right time, at the right frequency. You feel it resonating within your body. So when we speak, it's important that we listen to our words. That's one thing. But are we able to listen to others? Are we able to listen to criticism? Are we able to listen to somebody who tells us uh, certain things? In the last uh, portion of the week that I uh, talked about on Friday, Parashat Bo, there was uh, a talk. Uh, what is happening there is that there are the last three plagues in Egypt when the Israelites 
uh, were there and wanting to leave. And um, there were plagues, there were, th there were three last plagues out of the 10. And just to jump real quick to what happened, what I want to mention is that after the ninth uh, plague, the advisors of Pharaoh told Pharaoh, listen, you are going down a rabbit hole that you won't be able to recover. I mean, Egypt is already going down and just let go, let them go. It's costing us more than it is worth it. But he didn't just listen, did not listen to their, to their advice. He also rejected them. He considered them being, being afraid, being chickens, not wanting to uh, claim what is theirs. And who is, who says that somebody belongs to somebody? You know, we are at a time where, uh, where human slavery is at its highest peak than any other time in history. It is who is to who gave the permission to somebody to be own to own somebody else for whatever reason that is. I know personal personally people that have been that went through this. Um, and and through the work through the documentary that I started 10, 10 years ago and um, and uh, it is it is a horrible experience and this is what we're what's going on today with all this coronic era this is not uh, this is the third world war this is it's, third world war is not about a conventional war it is about our consciousness it is about our uh, place of inhabiting within ourselves and this is what uh, is being is being attempted uh, it succeeded in many in many aspects to steal our thoughts to steal our intentions to tell us how to think to tell us what to see to, to tell us that what we see is the true thing and we don't know really what is true from what we're hearing in the media but this is really with all the all the corona my take on this whole thing and uh, uh, on this whole coronic era and and the the, the immunizations and all this uh, mess of global control is that the the virus and uh, the mutated virus and talk about it today also in spiritually uh, the mutated virus because the the, the 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 SARS virus was original but it was mutated that that was created and all the mess was in the implementation of the 5G network was all in, uh, implemented in order for uh, for them to be able for the not even the government those that top percent of the percent the very small number of people that are uh, interested in pushing things into our body now what's the best way to push our th things into our body is to create a panic to create a panic of health you are sick. Be at home. We are protecting you. Now let's give you the medicine. Tell me, what system do you trust that can heal you if it made you sick in the first place? When I talk about system, I talk about the way, the reason of controlling, the, the people that are trying to push things and to create agendas to move into certain directions. This is the war, the war on consciousness. No government and no people want a group of people, a mass of people, to think critically doesn't exist and so pay attention to where you are how you inhabit yourself how do you feel every day when you get up in the morning what is the first thing you do be grateful be grateful to what we have because there is somewhere somebody that has a worse situation than yourself and we are in not not we're not in easy times so the places that we inhabit ourselves also contribute to are we listening to somebody else? Are we able to listen? Are we able to adapt, to make change? To make change as we go, on the fly. And that is also possible when we're looking at things from the past, when we're looking at our lessons, when we're looking at how we acted, how we inhabited our energy field, the energy field that we inhabited, what, what quality it had. And that also allows us, of course, when we are in this place of humility, this place of recognizing our part, definitely, is to recognize when we made a mistake. And when we made a mistake, not necessarily for our choice, but made a mistake maybe in not paying attention to hurting somebody else, or making a mistake that maybe a choice, like Pharaoh, he, he denied it because of his own ego.
And how many leaders do we see here that are, are, are uh, operating from their ego? Well, let me fill all the pictures, all the screen with everything. There won't be a place on the screen. And so the leadership needs, and, 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 and it's, it's a must in order to lead, to be able to listen, based on the listening, to be able to shift and to change based on the need, based on our desires, based on our intentions, based on the lay of the land. And the most important is to know when we uh, made something that was wrong by others, we made a mistake, we made a choice that was not serving the, the, the purpose that affected other people. And that is a, a, a part of Ve'ahavta Lerecha Kamocha. So love your neighbor, your friend. Give love to your neighbor, your friend, your gardener, your partner, anybody, in the same way that you express love to yourself. Think, is this something I would like somebody to talk with me? Would I want to somebody to listen to me? Yes, we want to be listened. We want to be heard. We are, we are, this is in our DNA. We want somebody to change to how I'm going through, of course. You know, we're, we're in a place where we're all the time shifting. We're fickle as humans. So we're going through changes. What you say, I am today, this is who I am today. In five years, you say, oh, there was young me. But at that time of your young you, you were very adamant. So you, you, you want people to understand you. You want people to see you. You want people to, to embrace you. We all do. And, and, and the last point is when we are in a place of recognizing that we did something that affected somebody else in a negative way, that person is feeling that they're being seen. So when, when I get that, I feel I'm being seen. You feel you're being seen. So, uh, yeah, wow, that was it. <laughs> so pay attention to your energy. Pay attention to your frequency. And, um, and let... Let us go with... Uh, with an intention of clarity. This is the ball, sound ball of our crown chakra. Let's go with intention of clarity, with intention of listening to our frequency, with intention of accepting things that may be different than how I see things. And let's give love to our neighbor in the same way that we express love to ourselves. This is uh, Abracadabra, create what you speak. I'm Ilan Azulai. I wish for you a wonderful day, a wonderful week, good vibration. And I'll see you today at 3 p.m. for a wonderful show of spiritual yada with Penelope Jean Hayes. And our guest today is Shari Edward. She is a pioneer in human bioacoustics. We'll talk about that. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. <laughs>